So we are going to have major modules like PC module. PC module is going to have the PC marks inside. We don't want too many modules, small modules. If we are going to have too many small modules, then there could be many signals. It's going to make the circuit very complex. So to realize register transfer level, what we need to do, we need to consolidate the circuit something like this. So in this case, we are going to keep the MUX and other logic gates within PC module. And this is instruction memory. And then we are going to create a logic called decoder. Decoder is the one which is going to get 32 bits directly from the memory and it's going to produce address for the register source register 1 source register 2 and destination register and then the register file this is a module it's going to have 32 registers and then it implements read as asynchronous and write as synchronous and there is a module called immediate generator so the same 32 bits instruction will be available to immediate generator and it's going to make use of the immediate values and then it's going to generate different kinds of immediate values. IMMB, IMMJ, IMM immediate, IMM S, IMM U. There will be different values based on the opcode. Control logic is the one which is going to generate all control signals. It's going to define the ALU operation primarily. Right, so it's going to control all the multiplexers. Now, if you look at the ALU, whatever the marks we had, IR marks, now that has become part of ALU. Right, so all the immediate values go to ALU. It has got the marks internally. So it's going to choose the value between source register and immediate value. That's how the ALU is going to perform different kinds of operation. Here you can see the MUX select. The MUX is actually part of ALU module now. And this operation is defined by control logic, ALU operation. And this ALU produces different kinds of outputs, 32 bits value. If it is going to perform operation between source registers RS1 and RS2, each register has got 32 bits value. Sometimes it could perform operation between source register and immediate value. In that case also it's going to be 32 bits value. But in case of branch instruction, the result is going to be Boolean. So it's going to be single bit either true or false. So BT is always going to be true or false. Similarly, you have the other output which is nothing but JT 32 bits and this JT goes to PC jump target and the output of ALU goes to both memory sometimes the output acts like address for the memory and sometimes the value of ALU will be written back into register file so there is a logic separate logic called write back marks the select signal write back marks is controlled by control logic and based on the select it's going to choose the values. The destination register could be PC plus 4 or it could be PC plus IMMU or it could be only IMMU or sometimes it could be the output of arithmetic logic unit. There are different possibilities. That's how the entire circuit works. This is what actually you are going to explore how you can implement this RTL design using Verilog HDL. And then once you implement the RTL, then it will also explore how to verify the RTL design using languages like System Verilog and methodologies like UVM. Alright, thanks, thanks for watching this video.